Jesus. It's a weird creature. Oh. <laughs> well, Bev's looking for our leak, aren't you, Bev? Mm -hmm, indeed. Checking that we've got the right place. Okay. Oh, we hate that one. Yeah, I know, but... <laughs> okay, so there... There, I've got them all in focus, yeah? Mm-hmm. Always love them, but I love them when they're whole. But you can also just about see the secondary. Wow, what a rainbow! It's been absolutely chucking up dying, and now we've got this. But I think I finally know where I dropped that fiver the other day. It's just the other side of the marina wall. So we'll have to get a boat hook and go digging for it. It says you're focused, but my eyes ain't. Go. <laughs> Well, I was ready and able to uh, pull part of the engine apart, <laughs> but um, we had another inspection and we realised that one of the nuts was off. So Bev's put a new nut on and we're going to start the engine up and hopefully that will be that done. But we have cleaned all the oil up first. Yes, of course we have. So that if, um, you know, so we can see, because this is the thing about Beverly and I keeping the engine clean. If you keep your engine clean, then you can see issues and, um, you know, if it's just as simple as a nut, but the guy at the shop uh, thought it was a um, O-ring that had gone. But, you know, if there's no nut, then the O-ring won't be any use anyway. So there's no seal, is there, Bev? We'll find out. We'll find out. We're going to put start the engine, but Bev's done the checks. So let's get that engine started. On that and go. Right, so Yes, it's me and that damn camera, Beverly. So Beverly's just uh, masking up a little mirror. Fixing our inspection mirror. <laughs> so how long have you been saying you're going to fix the inspection mirror, Bev? About two years. Two years. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Beverly? <laughs> Your reputation's in tatters. <laughs> Katie just had a terrible surprise. She, she's found out that the device will only switch with the the device will only work with the position. <laughs> Devices only work. Go on, you might as well put my reputation in the turn. I don't care. Devices only work with the on-off switch. It's not in the off position. <laughs> has to be switched on to work. I'm reading the manual on our new DC to AC uh, converter. Oh, there we are, there we are. I'll, I'll reach down here to the murky depths of the boat. This is a highly technical switch on it. This is the inverter. This is a highly technical switch called off and on. And she's a bit miffed because the manual doesn't say the unit will only work when the switch is in the on position. Yeah, I said it would be a bit of a shock to the electrical world if the unit worked while the switch was in the off position, but there you have it. You just can't get the stuff. <laughs> no, it's not. No, 
serious they think it is. No, it's a plant. It's a creature. Look at it. Oh, it's moving. Yeah. You can see it's moving. You know, it's some kind of weird creature. Yeah. Interesting though. Jesus. It's a weird creature. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so what? So what's all that stuff on the um, um, pontoon there? Apparently it's Arcturan hyperweed. It grows a food a day. A foot a day? Apparently so. I've no idea what it actually is. Just don't know. So where did you find it? Uh, somebody over there has just said it's a bloody nuisance. So, <laughs> <laughs> so where did you find it, Bev? Wrap round the wrap round the rudder. Yeah, so it's uh, just stuff that's growing and we picked up. So Bev's got rid of it. Darn right, Bev has. Right. One of the things Bev gets paranoid about is weed growing underneath her keel. Now, this is not ours boat, but this is a really, really sad tale. That's definitely a boat that's not moved for a bit. Gonna do some more cleaning then, Bev? Yeah, I need to get round the bar. <laughs> I need to get round the bar. Because there's more of this crappy stuff on the sides, so. Well. One of those little jobs. Let's do it. One of the 999 little jobs that's to do on the boat. Totally. Well, I best go and do one of them as well. I'm a little bit upset. I'm not a princess! <laughs> I have just put under this mattress fabric, wood, uh, acrylic and all sorts of stuff. Um, and I cannot feel a thing. No pee here at all. Just loads and loads of other stuff so it's official i'm not a princess well we were supposed to be going off to scotland today and i was really looking forward to it and all that dead excited but we have a a checklist um for going off and we were going through the checklist and the first one is oil fan valve seat belt and strainer and the oil leak that I thought we had fixed has come back. So I had thought we'd sort of like got away with it because it was just the nut and I wouldn't have to dismantle the engine. But no, I'm going to have to dismantle the engine. But do you know what? I've just got to spike down and get on with it because we are, Beverly and I wanted to use this time when we're in UK waters to learn. Trust me, we are learning and we are um, becoming more reliant on ourselves. Also, the checklist found a problem. If we ignore the problem, what's the point in having a checklist? That is very true. I mean, say it's there. Oh, and uh, I might as well tell you, I've put some resources um, on um, our website and our checklist is on one of the resources. There's not many at the moment, but it'll be just be something that I'll be adding to when I find something of note. It's rubber glove time on Salty Lass. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm not nowhere near as good a... That wasn't bad. Yeah, well. Cool. Right, come on, get your socket set. Chop, chop. I've got my socket set. Cover me, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self. Um... When you were uh, removing the pipes, like um, we are, remove the bottom one first because that way you can just sort of like, you can keep the water in the pipe and you can... Um, get you your can, bucket, get your bucket under the, under the... Yeah, you can... Under put, the impeller pump. Yeah, you can basically take, put the bucket underneath the impeller pump much easier. Whereas, you know, it's just note to self really. I've got water all in my bilge. I might have been able to avoid a little bit more water, but it would have gone in the bilge anyway. It's that simple. Work is fascinating. I mean, I could watch it for hours. <laughs>
And it's always nice to see somebody enjoying themselves. <laughs> it's always nice for that person not to be me. <laughs> I actually do enjoy myself. I just think it's... I think it's because I'm learning stuff and I like learning. I like learning too, but... <laughs> Like I like your... learning stuff that doesn't stink a diesel. <laughs> Not quite, what, admitting defeat, but uh, I've, had to, I've had to employ the big guns on this. I'm yes. not a big gun. You're right. I've employed Beverly. I've got one nut that is just so super duper awkward. Yeah. So Bev's here going cursing and squaring, aren't you, Bev? <laughs> <laughs> lots of cursing, lots of swearing. I've got three nuts done. Just the last one to do. It's so dirty, I can't see anything in it anymore. <laughs> so what have you discovered, Bev? These little diesel oil gloves are no damn use. I need evening gloves. <laughs> up to my elbow. Yeah. I didn't sign up for this. We did not sign up for this, did we? I signed up for sailing to land the foredeck in a bikini drinking pina coladas in the Caribbean. Not for land under an engine in flipping Northern Ireland while it's chucking down outside and getting covered in oil. We've, n we've not even got anywhere near the, uh, the bikini, Bev, let alone uh, anything else. I know. Well, apparently the day is going from bad to worse. <laughs> yeah, see what I mean? Bev's swearing rate has gone up. And apparently we're leaking coolant, but there you go. Well, I've managed to succeed a little bit. Um, what Bev and I uh, do in uh, situations which we find fraught is we swap between us. When the swearing goes to a certain level, it's, we, I, I say to Bev, get Bev, off the, get off the boat. <laughs> your swearing's reached to that level. That you need to walk away. <laughs> so I took over and I've managed to unscrew uh, one of the bolts a bit more. But like I bad. can't I can't unscrew it anymore, so I'm walking away and I've realized why I can't unscrew it anymore is I've actually got to unscrew another bolt. Then I'll actually have enough wiggle room to unscrew the other bolt a bit more. So you've got to do them. You can't just sort of like, I'll do this bolt first. You've got to do them sort of like a little bit on this one, a little bit on that one and a little bit on the other one. And hopefully you can get the ready thing done. But It's like a bad American cop movie, isn't it? Step, Put the spanner down and step away. <laughs> That's what I say to them. Yeah, put it away and step away because you're swearing too much. Victory is Beverly's Ray! It's overrated and I take it off my... <laughs> so you mean all this fuss has been for that stupid tiny little bit of rubber there? Yes, Beverly, that tiny bit of rubber. But basically that's the O-ring. Um, I'm that... going to shit somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that! Well, well, as long as it's not me, I'll be fine. Hi darling. Hi Gunnar. How's it going? <sighs> Success is ours. Oh good. Small victory. Lovely job. <laughs> yeah, small victory is ours. So I'm now off, hopefully, to go and get this O-ring sorted. But the thing is, the O-ring is there. Yeah. But anyway, hey ho, let's go see if we can get it sorted. Got a new one in and you can you can see there that it's um deeper. Um but the circumference of this particular o-ring um, this is um, the current o-ring that's come out this is the next size down and I don't know if you can see that, that that's um, smaller on the circumference I think it is, you can just about see it's smaller well we've actually gone to the size that's even smaller than this because as you can see this is a lot fatter and um, basically the guy here has just said that my making it as a bit smaller it will stretch so but we've got this extra one just in case so hopefully we will get it right
So what we're doing at the moment is we're just turning the engine. By hand. By hand. To make sure the impeller turns. And as you can see, the impeller is turning, which is always a good start. Right, so I'm happy now to tighten the rest of it up. Yeah. Well, um, we've put it all together and uh, now for the really, really scary part. And it's start the engine again. Beverly and I both feel very right, so what tests, apprehensive. What manual testing have we done? Well, basically, uh, we turned the engine and we made sure that the impeller was going round. We turned it manually expected. by hand. We did turn it manually by hand. So we've turned it manually by hand. We've refilled the water system. We've refilled the water system. And... Um, We've put the um, bolts on as tight as we can. Um, oh God, this is so this is so uh, scary. But starting. Well, that didn't work out, did it? No, we were so hopeful that um, by changing this um, O-ring it would be sorted out. But what we think it is, is the fact that we haven't tightened the bolts up correctly. Um, and the juggling of the engine could have just sort of like worked things loose a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the engine cool, tighten them up, and then do another test but in the meantime this um boat looks like a bomb has hit it yet again it always looks like a bomb's hit it and it's hitting it.